so good. Hello, hello, welcome back to the kitchen. In today's video, we are making beef also buco in the oven. This is a pretty simple recipe. It takes about three hours from start to finish. Super tender, amazing cut of beef. Beef also buco is something they recently started carrying at my local Costco. They sell this in a big pack. That's like around four pounds. It has four pieces. Um, beef also buco is basically beef shank. So it comes in the, I guess the hip or the back legs of the cow. And it's got a lot of collagen and connective tissues and fat and protein. This is just an amazing, cut. It is something that you have to cook low and slow to make sure the cut gets really tender and falls apart. It's not something that I see super often at a lot of grocery stores, but if you can get your hands on it, I highly recommend it. I did use some very simple seasonings for this dish and just some mushrooms and onions to flavor it as aromatics. If you have fresh garlic as well, I would recommend that too, but this is just a great dish. I believe also buco stands for hole in the bone because every piece of also buco will have marrow in the middle. As you can see here, that's the marrow. So you can definitely save the marrow afterwards and eat the marrow. Um, so it's just really, really good. If you guys make bone broth and you save your bones, you can save the marrow bones for making soup another day as well. If you're watching this video today, I have a very exciting announcement. We are hosting a free April challenge for those of you guys who are looking to get back on track, whether it's keto, carnivore, and help you get into shape for the summer. Our free challenge will be hosted in our community, which is free to join as well. I will leave links down in the description below for you to check out. Make sure you register if you want to attend. There are going to be live workshops, a bunch of free resources, and just a like-minded group of people who are also doing this as well for April, whether you're doing keto or carnivore, and you're just welcome to join if you're ready to get in shape for the summer. So this dish is pretty simple. I just roasted this in the oven. Oven. I have made this a couple different ways. I have tried it in the Dutch oven. I've also just tried regular roasting it in the oven. Both turned out really good. The reason why I like the oven over the Dutch oven is that in the Dutch oven, you have to stack them. And I just find that it cooks a little bit more evenly when they are laying flat um, without kind of like overlapping on each other. Just allows for even cooking. Whereas in the Dutch oven, they're kind of all like crushed and, and stacked on top of each other. So the cooking isn't as even. This is about four pounds of meat, which is so much meat. The last time I made this, we ended up eating also buco for dinner every single night, all week. So it is quite a bit of meat. If you're feeding a family, this is enough for like two or three days probably. If you're doing carnivore, yeah, it's about four pounds of meat however much you eat in a day. So a lot of traditional dishes do sear this with a bit of a flour crust. I did sear this on the stove top. Flour crust is not required. Still ends up being really good. Simple seasonings that you can adjust or omit based on your taste and tolerance. So to prep this, it was pretty simple. I opened up the package of beef shanks, patted them really dry, cleaned them, uh, washed them off. There was excess blood on there. So you just wanna make sure you wash off the meat really well, make sure it's really clean pat it extremely dry, and then I mix together a seasoning blend of salt, black pepper, garlic powder, uh, Italian seasoning, and that's all I used. If you're gonna be using fresh garlic, you don't even need to use the garlic powder, but I actually don't have fresh garlic today, I ran out. And then I also chopped up half a large onion and some mushrooms to go along with it. Those are optional, they're just aromatics. They bring a lot of depth and just that extra punch to make it super beefy. It's not necessary to add any liquid to the pan while you're cooking it because this just cooks low and slow perfectly in its own heat. You just wanna make sure that you seal it up really tightly. So what I did is I mixed up the seasoning blend and then I gently uh, seasoned the meat on all sides. And then I brought it over to the stovetop and I seared up all the beef on the stovetop for a couple minutes on each side just to get a really nice brown crust with some avocado oil. You can also use tallow. I don't recommend butter because butter will burn. So any high smoke point oil will work. And then I took out a nine by 13 inch baking sheet. I laid down aluminum foil with a piece of parchment paper and I put in each piece of also buco and then I wrapped it up. If you don't want your meat to touch the aluminum foil, you can double double wrap it. The reason why I put the meat on top of parchment paper is just so it doesn't stick. It just helps with the sticking factor. You can definitely put it directly on the aluminum foil as well. And if you don't want your meat to touch the aluminum foil directly, because I know some people don't like that, then you can also add a second layer of parchment on the top as well before wrapping the aluminum over top. But you just wanna make sure that the nine by 13 inch um, baking tray is sealed really tightly. And just make sure you do measure before you set it all up because these pieces are pretty big and you just wanna make sure everything fits in the pan and then there isn't any crowding and you just wanna make sure that it's a single layer of meat inside the pan. And then I baked the also buco in the oven for three hours at 325. You can definitely adjust the temp anywhere from 300 to 350, depending on how much time you have. I recommend at least three hours if you have the time, but if you're in a rush, you can check it at two and a half to see whether it's done and ready. And you'll 
know when it's done, when it's just fork tender and kind of just starts falling apart. So I have a nine by 13 inch baking sheet here lined with some aluminum foil. Uh, I recommend just doing a quick measure uh, before kind of committing to the setup, just in terms of the size of the shanks, because you want to make sure that they're pretty much single layer. You don't want to be stacking them because it doesn't cook evenly when you stack them. So I did measure them raw just to make sure they would kind of all fit here. And then I just measured out a piece of parchment that I'm going to lay on the bottom. This just helps with the sticking. And then I'm going to layer each piece in here using my hands just for the delicacy of, I do have to play a little bit of Tetris here, but I think this will work. Now, if you don't want your meat to touch the aluminum foil, feel free to wrap more parchment paper around it, but I personally don't worry about that. Um, I'm just gonna add the mushrooms and the onions directly in, and it's mostly just to kind of get a little bit of flavor as these cook low and slow. This is optional, but I mean, I just think it adds a little bit of depth. Mushrooms always add umami, these are pretty big hunks of meat, so you know whatever it is to help bring the meat to life, right? I love the flavor of mushrooms. And also just the onion, same thing, just for flavor. Again, if you have fresh garlic, I would put fresh garlic, but I ran out today and I had to use garlic powder. That's totally okay. And as you can see here, I chopped a little bit too much mushroom for this dish, but that's okay. I'll just put this back in the fridge and use it for something else. We just wanna make sure this is already pretty full that we don't overstuff the dish at all. And lastly, I'm just gonna drizzle a little bit of Worcestershire sauce on top of the meat. Probably should have th did this earlier, but it doesn't really matter because it's all gonna bake low and slow anyways. Worcestershire sauce goes really well with beef. It's decently salty, so you don't want to use too much. Again, everything is cooking low and slow. All of the flavors will kind of melt and infuse. So we are gonna cook this on a 325 degree oven for two and a half to three hours. If you want it more tender, you can go up to three and a half hours, but anywhere from two and a half if you're in a rush to three for ideal, to three and a half if you have the extra time, I would say is good. And then you can play around with the temperature a little bit between 300 to 325. I will leave the full recipe instructions on the blog at justrealfood.com, so make sure you check that out. Now let's wrap this top layer with more aluminum foil. Shiny side down. And the key here is just to make sure you get a very good seal. You want the meat to be cooking low and slow and just really trapped in there. So again, if you have a Dutch oven, you can also do this inside the Dutch oven. The only thing with the Dutch oven is that they kind of have to be stacked. And I find that they cook a little bit better when they're laid flat. But it's up to you. There's different ways to cook the same kind of meat. Okay, let's throw this into the oven. So the beef shanks were in the oven for almost three hours and I'm ready to dig in. This looks really, really good. Now I did check it a little bit when it was in the oven. I just lifted the aluminum foil and then I used a fork to poke at it just to make sure it's the right tenderness. So it's pretty forgiving. You can definitely open it up and check it out. And if you feel like it's not tender enough, um, make sure you take the fork and stick it into like the thickest part of the meat or the thickest piece of the meat just to see how you like the tenderness. And if you find that it's not tender enough, you just leave it in there for a little bit longer. But this smells really good. So I just took all of the beef shanks, plated them. It does leave a little bit of um, liquid inside the pan, which is a combination of water and fat. Um, we can definitely save that and you can scoop it back on top afterwards to prevent it from drying out, but it should be very, very tender. But if you want, you can store that in a jar or something like that just to have when you reheat the next time. It's not a too much water, just a little bit, probably a cup or less than a cup. Um, but right now I'm just gonna scoop a little bit back on just to re glisten and reheat and re-moisturize the meat. I just think that mushrooms and onions add a really, really, really decadent umami to beef and they pair really well together. I'm gonna sneak a mushroom. Mmm. So good. So good. That's really tasty. I'm ready to dig right in. If you like this video today, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. I think you'll like another one of my related videos, which is beef tri-tip that I also made in the oven. So I will leave a link up top to that video. Don't forget to check it out. Leave me a comment down below and let me know whether you've had also buco before, how you like to make it best, and we will see you in the community for the April challenge. Until next time.